When you were a kid, did you ever come through the door of your house, take a whiff of something, and your mouth just began to water? Maybe someone in the house was baking cookies or some other tasty treat. Immediately, you run over to the oven, you peer through the glass, and through it, you see that delicious snack rising and, and turning golden brown around the edges, the smile-inducing sign. It's almost ready. I think I've shared before, Thanksgiving is probably my favorite holiday. I love all of the different scents that make their home in the kitchen for the better part of the day. One of my favorites in our kitchen is tied to our family tradition of fresh baked cinnamon rolls first thing Thanksgiving morning. I mean, after all, you got to preheat the oven for the turkey anyway. Why not do it with style? Now, the reason I mention this is because, as John told us last week, each of the 24 elders were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Now, I'm guessing these, these bowls didn't smell like cookies or cinnamon rolls, but the idea is that they would have smelled of wonderful incense. You may have had some bad experiences with incense. It may remind you of a college dorm room, but incense was particularly valuable. As a child, Jesus was given frankincense and myrrh. Both were used in making incense. Now, that doesn't initially speak of value, but just think of the third gift in the triad, gold. The fact that they are all listed together, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, tells us they are of comparable value. Now, incense was not only valuable, but pleasurable, even a delight-inducing experience. That's, that's what our prayers are likened to, incense before the Lord. In other words, God doesn't begrudge us our prayers, acting as if their fulfillment is a burden to him that, that may, he wished to be free of. Rather, they're a sweet aroma. God takes delight in our prayers. They bring a smile to his face and joy to his heart. The next time you think your request is, is too small or not important enough for God, remember that he relishes your request. And before we move on, it's worth mentioning that the phrase God's people in verse 8 is not what the text says. In Greek, the word that the NIV translates as God's people is just one word, hagios, which means holy. It's also often translated as saints. That's not to say that they were that the bulls were holding the exclusively the prayers of the religious elite. Rather, it implies that we are the saints. From this point on, saint or hagios becomes John's preferred word for believer. Now, this is important because uh, some will argue that from Revelation 4 onward, the word church no longer appears, which is true. It, it doesn't. But the word saint does. And in the New Testament, the saints are synonymous with the church. Look at Philippians 1.1 1, 1. or Colossians 1.2. To the saints or hagios and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae. In Revelation 13.7, which I anticipate we'll get to I don't know, sometime in 2026, the beast that was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months we're told in, in verse 7, also it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe, people, and language, and nation. Now in chapter 13, verse 10, and chapter 14, verse 12, we hear the refrain, here is a call for the endurance of the saints. Now that's the church on earth called to endure which I simply point out to challenge the notion that the church has disappeared or been raptured from the earth following chapter 4. Now, we'll learn more about the prayers of the saints in days to come. For the time being, I just want to remind you of your identity and the invitation implicit in this text. You are saints. You are holy. How did you become holy? Well, that's easy. We become Hagios, by the very blood of the Lamb, the elders are singing of in verse 9. 
And it's because of the lamb that we have been adopted as children and our prayers become precious. Let us embrace who we are and embrace the invitation to joyfully lift any and every need to the one who is faithful to answer. Have a blessed week.